Kevin Carmichael is an author, speaker, and YouTuber. Who Gary Vee called a content DJ that inspires people. He went from making $300 per month and being a shy introvert to having over 300 million people watching his YouTube videos. And today we're gonna learn from his top 10 rules for success. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life. Like nine to the nine. For my top 10. Top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, this is Nina Huang Carmichael and chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best so today let's learn from one of the best my husband Evan Carmichael and his top 10 rules for success I hope you enjoy because I'm going to enjoy okay let's kick it off with rule number one find your core value if you want to figure out your purpose you need to figure out what you stand for as a human. I brought a whole book on it, it's here, it's called Your One Word. It's about finding your most important core value. Who are you? When you understand what your single most important core value is, everything else becomes so much easier. So for me, it's belief, right? Belief is my single most important core value. How does that help? Well, with every decision that I make, it's seen through the lens of belief. Every video content that I make is about belief. It has to be. Every interaction I have, every workshop, every book, every meeting, all of it has to be run through the believe framework, right? The glasses of belief. If I'm hiring somebody onto my team, skills alone aren't enough. It's great that you can write copies. Do you believe in entrepreneurs? It's a big difference. So when you understand your core value, everything else becomes clearer and you're less likely to follow what other people want you to do. Everybody around you, they have a goal for you even if it's well-intentioned. They have opinions on what you should do with your life. Everybody around you, this is what you should do with your life. Everybody has an opinion. You don't know which way to go. If you don't know which way to go, it's because you don't know what you stand for, because you're standing on quicksand. But when you understand your one word, your who, your most important core value, it's like you're standing on a rock that nobody can push you from. So how do you figure that out quickly, right? I mean, this is 200 something pages. Let's boil it down super quick for you. You wanna think about all the people that you love, your favorite teacher, what you loved about your parents. Think about your favorite musician, your favorite band, your favorite song, your favorite movie, your favorite book, all, the, all your favorite things. The thing that when you are around, consuming it, reading it, being with them, it makes you feel bold, alive, amazing, confident, unstoppable, right? We've all had those moments. It's just not consistent enough yet. We're gonna make it for you. It's just not consistent enough yet. And so write down a list of five to 10 things that make you come alive. Again, people, your favorite teacher, movies, all of those things that make you, that you love, that you love, like you could get lost spending time with them or reading them or listening to them. Then write down three keywords that describe each of them. So your favorite teacher, why did you love Mr. Jones? It's not because he taught you grade four math, right? There was something else about Mr. Jones that you love. Why do I love Seabiscuit, the movie? Because it's about an oversized jockey and an undersized horse and an owner that has no money and all of these things. And they all come together. It's belief, right? My parents taught me that I'm Evan Castrilli Carmichael and I can do anything that I believe that I can, right? And so through all the things that I love, believe is the common thread. What is it for you? You have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. It doesn't have to take you years of work. Just write down all of the people and the things that you love, three keywords for each, like do this. This is important. Just do it today. It'll make a huge difference in your life. It's worth it. This is the best 15 minutes you can spend in your life. Do it. <laughs> Pause the video and do it. And then just see what comes up consistently. What word comes up over and over and over and over and over and over again. Chances are that's your one word. That's your who. Then when you discover it, you have to start living that life. So, you know, if my one word is believe, then I got to think, okay, who around me is not believe? What am I doing that is not believe? What projects am I working on that are not believe? And it gives you clarity and forces some tough decisions. And the more unhappy you are right now in your life or business is because you are out of alignment with your one word. If I was doing something that was anti-believe, if I even have made tons of money, I'm not gonna be happy because it's against who I am. It's against my core value. Same thing for you. If you are unhappy, it's because you are doing things that don't align well with your core value and you don't know what your core value is, so fix it. Rule number two, act on your ideas. Most people never manifest their ideas because you don't trust your ideas. 
That bold idea that came to you, that made sense to you in the moment, the next day feels too bold, too crazy, too insane, too not for someone like you. I believe that the decisions that come to you when you're feeling bold are actually the right ones for you and you have to take immediate action on because otherwise your head gets in the way and talks you down from doing the things that you should be doing. So right now I'm in the process of looking for a creative director for my business. Someone to look at all my content, suggest ways to make it better, to, to be focused on the branding and opportunities for me. And this was a suggestion from Mark Drager, friend of the channel, longtime personal friend of mine as well. He helped film my very first video. He's the reason why I did top 10 moves to success. Long story with Mark. And he said, Evan, you need a creative director for your business. Creative director or brand manager or CEO. Somebody to be in charge of all the creative decisions and getting me out on the stages that I need to be out on. So how do we make these videos better? That's that person's role. And so in my head, when he first said it, I'm, I'm a little afraid. I'm scared. Like, oh. How do I find this person? I need to vibe well with them. I don't. I can't just bring anybody into that role. I'm a, I'm a pretty weird duck, and so this has to be a good, you know, long-term fit for me. How much is this person going to cost? How do I fit into my cost structure right now with my business? How are we going to deal with conflict? So it's all of the negativity, all of the things that are reasons why it's not going to work. And so instead, I need to focus on this is a bold idea. And I need to at least explore it. I need to try it. I need to play it out. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. But teaching yourself, teaching myself that I do bold things. I do scary things. I do difficult things. And being scared is not a good enough reason for not to take action. And so those ideas that come to you, trust that they came to you for a reason. If it came to you and you're thinking about it and you feel bold, like, man, I would love to go off and do that. The best thing you can do is just start going off and doing that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to plan, 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 plan. You're going to spend all your best energies just stuck in planning mode. Instead of actually going out and taking action, you're going to tell your friends about it. They're going to tell you it's a stupid idea. You're going to sleep on it. You're going to wake up and tell yourself it's a stupid idea. And then what happens is no momentum. The biggest thing that is missing from your life <laughs> is momentum. Nina's happy. Nina's smiling. She's next to me filming. That's all that's missing. You're a genius. You have great ideas. Great, uh, genius, amazing ideas. You're just missing momentum. Because once you get the idea, you sit on it. And then you tell yourself why you can't do it instead of going off and proving to yourself that you can. Rule number three, put in the effort. Self-love comes from doing difficult things. Self-love comes from doing things that you think are beyond your comfort zone that you're not capable of doing and just getting up and trying to do it. That's when you love yourself. When something is easy and you win, you actually don't feel that great about yourself. If you were to go and w uh, run a race against three-year-olds and you won, great, yeah, you won. You might even post about it on Instagram, but you don't love yourself. You don't feel good about yourself because you played small, because it was easy, because you were expected to win, because it was inside your comfort zone. When you play inside your comfort zone always, you don't love yourself. It comes from doing difficult things. That's how you build respect. That's how you build credibility. That's how you build self-love for you. Forget about how other people respect or look at you. It's how you feel about yourself. That's the game. And that comes from doing difficult things. So if you ran a race against three-year-olds and you won, great. Who cares? You don't feel great about yourself because you were expected to win. But if you ran a race against Usain Bolt and he ran backwards on one leg, he would still probably destroy you but you should feel great about yourself because you did the thing when it was hard to do the thing. You might have lost to a same boat, but you got in the race against him. That's how you build self-love. When you tie your self-respect, when you tie your self-worth, when you tie your self-love to the effort that you put in on a daily basis, that's when you start to win. When you tie your self-love to winning, to getting results, you lose. When you tie your self-love to how many likes you have on Instagram or views or subscribers on YouTube, you lose. It's about the effort. Are you putting in the effort every day? Because if you are proud of your effort on a daily basis, I promise you, you are going to crush it. But if you are only proud of yourself when you win, here's what's gonna happen. You're only gonna take on small things. You're gonna play small your entire life because you're only gonna take on projects that you have a pretty high chance of winning at because that's how you have love for yourself. And that's a losing game, because you're capable of more. You're capable of doing a lot more stuff. You're capable of playing a bigger game. You're capable of having a bigger impact. You have to. It's your duty. It's your duty to love yourself. When you love yourself, you'll be able to spread that more and help other people.
And so how do you love yourself? It comes from doing difficult things. It comes from when your heart's beating like crazy and you're scared and it's some big project and you say, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do that scary thing. I'm gonna try to record a video in public where people may be watching you. Doesn't mean your video has to be great. Chances are it's gonna suck. But you tried and you should feel great about yourself. Rule number four, take control of your life. Saying I never have the time is the single greatest excuse that is preventing you from accomplishing your goals. You are not allowed to say it anymore. Stop it. Stop believing your own lies. Whatever story you're telling yourself as to why you can't do it, how much time you don't have, somebody else who made it had it way worse than you did. They made it and had it way worse than you did. If they can make it, you can too. The only difference is the story you're telling yourself that you don't have enough time to do it. So I'm gonna give you a more fun example on this one. Uh, I wanna get to being a better League of Legends player, okay? I would play League of Legends, I don't know, once or twice a week, depending on what was happening in my calendar. I started sponsoring a League of Legends player, my first esports venture, this guy named Kyle Menko, and he plays Teemo. Teemo's a character in the game. I play Teemo. He's the best Teemo in the world. In any region around the world, he is the number one guy. And I said, Kyle, Menko, I want to sponsor you, and part of the deal is you're going to coach me. I want you to coach me on how to get better. I want to get better. I want to climb. I was in bronze, which is the second worst division in League of Legends. Uh, he said, what was the best you've ever done? I said, silver, which is the third worst division in League of Legends. And so he said, okay, I can help you. How often are you practicing? I said, I don't know, once or twice a week. It's like, okay, that's not enough. <laughs> I need you to play three games a day. Three games a day. And a game takes 35 to 40 minutes, sometimes longer, depending on how long it takes to get into the game. Could be 45 minutes, maybe even up to an hour. And I'm thinking in my head, three games a day? Are you nuts? I don't have time to do this. Uh, I can't make that happen. I got all these other responsibilities. Right? If it's important, you got to stop telling yourself that you can't do it. How do I justify playing three games a day when I have all these other stuff I need to do? I need to run a business. I want to scale. I want to grow my YouTube channel. I want to grow my impact. I need to write my book. I need to launch my YouTube course. I need to spend time with my wife and my family. I got lots of other things I need to do. I need to sleep, you know, all of it. How do I justify spending three games a day to improve my team up? I don't have the time. Your actions map to your ambitions. I look at my calendar and I made a way. I'm gonna do it. I wanna get better. I wanna improve. Now, I don't do it when I'm traveling, so I'm here in LA right now, so I haven't played my three games since I've been away. But when I'm in Toronto, pretty much every day that I'm in Toronto, I'll get my three games in. And I've gotten better. The results speak. I went from bronze to silver, and now I'm climbing up through silver, and I'm hopefully, the goal is to get the gold by the end of the year. So now it's the fourth worth, fourth worst division. And you're starting to get, once you get in the goal and you get a little bit higher, now you're starting to get some kind of, not reputation, but significance and just like you're actually a, a semi-decent player, right? So I'm, I'm chasing down my League of Legends goals. Because your personal goals, you may be watching and thinking, well, what is like, why are you wasting your time doing it? It's a personal goal to me. It might be a waste of time to you, Maybe building a, a deck for your backyard is a big waste of time for me. Maybe making your own clothes or whatever other hobby you have, cooking or crafting, is a big waste of time for me, right? So don't judge somebody else's personal goals. This is a personal goal of mine. I wanna chase it down and I wanna not tell myself that I don't have the time, right? As soon as you hear yourself say, I don't have the time, you're not taking control of your calendar. You're not taking control of your life. Of course you have the time. You choose not to prioritize it. That's the, that's the change in language you need to make. You're not allowed to say, I don't have the time. Instead, I choose not to prioritize it. Because now you're in charge. Now you have nobody to blame. Because when it's somebody else's fault, when you don't have the time, that's not your fault. It's somebody else's fault. That's everybody else who, who has demands on your time, right? You can't do anything about it. So let's just stay here and never accomplish your goals. You choose not to prioritize it. Once you take accountability, once you take responsibility to say, I'm going to take control of what I want to do in my life. That's when everything starts to change. Also, if you want to have more confidence and motivation, check out our 254 series. The link is in the description below. Find whatever the smallest first step is and then the smallest next step is and continue to build those steps. And when you look back, you'll have realized that you made some pretty significant progress. Four years by making videos every day, every day. 
And I'm impatient as anything because I want it to be amazing. I want to make every video better than the last. Dramatically in improve the chance of you getting your deal. They'll look over your proposal. They will give you feedback, suggestions, how to tweak your proposal. If you've never done it before, and I'm going through this process right now. Rule number five, love your craft. You look at the people who've made big money, they've been, they've been chasing something that they love doing. Because otherwise you won't put in enough work. If you're just chasing an opportunity, you, you're probably not gonna make it. If you don't love it enough, the people who love it will crush you. Like if salsa dancing was the hot trend for 2020, you can say, great, I'm gonna make tons of money salsa dancing being, a, being an instructor, and then I'll do that for three years and then retire and go travel the world and do what I love. You'll never make the money salsa dancing because Alex is gonna destroy you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because he loves it, right? Because you'll, you'll be a, a wannabe and you'll never put in enough work to actually get great at the thing. Like if you're, if you're gonna work with somebody who's gonna be in your, in your production and they're just, they just wanna make it as an actor because they think it's a path to make tons of money because Brad Pitt makes $40 million a movie or whatever it is, but they don't actually care about being a good actor. They're not even gonna get into your show. Like you're gonna spot that out and say, no, I need people who actually care about the craft. Rule number six, learn how to sell. You don't have to be an extrovert to sell. You also don't have to be a slime ball to sell either. All you need to sell is a vision that you believe in and a passion to make it come true. And if you don't learn to effectively sell, that genius idea that you have in here that can serve the world will never come to fruition and you'll never get the impact that you're after. So I'm here in LA and over the past two days, I've been on the podcast for Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street and Jay Abraham, who's the legendary marketing guru for Tony Robbins and Damon John and a whole bunch of other people. And I'm on their podcast and I'm telling them that they need to be on YouTube, that they need to get their message out. I wanna see them more heavily invested. I wanna see their message reach the world. And five years ago, Evan of five years ago would have been too afraid, too humbled, to worry that I might not be perfect, that I wouldn't be able to persuade them to do the thing, and so I wouldn't have tried. And I still have a bit of that in me. When, when Jordan Belfort asked me, how good are you? Like, how good at YouTube are you? And the answer that I gave was within the thought leadership world, if you, you wanna help entrepreneurs, I'm, I'm top three, five in the world. Even as I say it, it feels weird saying it because the, the Canadian or Carmichael kind of humbleness is pumping in, but it's also true. Because when you're talking to somebody who is not super familiar with what you're doing, they're trying to get an understanding. When I'm talking to Jordan Belfort and trying to give him an understanding of what I do and why my message is so important for him, I'm trying to serve him, I'm trying to help him. I want him to win. So the credibility is important, it backs it up. And me not strongly believing in myself means that he won't believe in me either. And one of my favorite messages from Jordan, and I told him this at the beginning of, of the podcast interview was, sales is about a transfer of certainty. Of all the things I've learned from Jordan Belford, that is the number one thing that still rings true in my head. Sales, if you wanna sell people, you wanna persuade them on something. And it's, again, not for nefarious reasons, not to screw somebody over, not just to get their money. You wanna persuade them. I'm here trying to persuade Jordan, trying to persuade Jay, trying to persuade lots of other people to take their message and put it up on YouTube to spread it to the world. It's for them, right? I got frustrated with Jordan halfway through the interview and he said, why are you frustrated? Because he's making it a joke and some and having fun and, and he loves having fun on the show and, and it, it's a more entertaining show. He's way more funny and entertaining than I am. I told him, you're doing this for the audience because people will watch the show. I'm doing this for you. Like we're here at a limited time and I want you to win. I want to get this out of my head into yours so you can go take action on it, right? So the ability to sell and persuade is based off your ability to transfer certainty. And so when you fully believe in the thing, when you fully believe in the thing like this is right, this is the thing that has to happen in service, in service for your customer, in service for your audience, you have to do this, not for me, but because it's the best thing for you. When you fully believe it, then you have to go all in on it. Rule number seven, don't settle for average. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but instead of being world class at that thing, you settled for being just above average at something that you should not be doing. 
Albert Einstein once said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will believe its whole life that it is stupid. That's most people's problems. You are a fish and you're trying to climb a tree instead of going and being great at swimming. This is the exact problem that I am on a mission to solve. So I recently had a young entrepreneur come to one of my Toronto Q&A meetups that are free that I host every week. And he said, Evan, I have a problem. I'm trying to decide between what my parents want me to be, which is an architect, and what I feel a yearning towards, which is being a musician. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to decide. I don't know how I'm going to be a success as a musician. I don't know how it's going to work out. And my parents want me to be an architect, and this is clearly defined path for how to do it. And he's afraid. And I think that's so many people. There's this safe, perfect path that has been designed that people have done forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Or there's this new, crazy, messy, unrealistic, unsafe, unsure path, which is following your passion, being an entrepreneur, and trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Here's the thing. If you only go down that safe path, if you only take that job, if you only listen to your parents or other people and, and you do what they want you to do, you're always going to be unhappy. You're always going to know that there was this thing inside you that you could have done, that you didn't take action on, and you hate it. It's never been easier to actually be yourself and build a business and have success being uniquely you. Right? This was not open to your parents and definitely not your grandparents. The ability to be an entrepreneur on the side, making money using your phone, is something that your grandparents don't understand. It's just, it's totally wild. And so you are a unique individual, right? You are, I am, we all are. You have unique interests, personality traits, belief systems. You're unique. You need to do something unique. If you are unique, you need to do something unique. If you're stuck doing the same thing that somebody else wants you to do, you're never going to be happy. Now, there may be some alignment. You may not absolutely hate the job that you're at, but you know you're capable of more. You're Michael Jordan. You are the Michael Jordan of something. You're a genius, an absolute bona fide genius at something. This is why I think it's the world's greatest problem. This is why I do what I do every single day in making this content and videos for you because I want to unlock people, hopefully more than one at a time, but even if it's just one person who watches this video and gets unlocked, I'm pumped because I think if everybody is off doing the thing that they are a genius at, man, I want to live in that world. Rule number eight, take more action. Hope without action leads to pain and suffering. Watching videos like this is not enough. It might give you hope but hope that is not tied to action and you doing something will mean you never accomplish your goals. The answer is always action. It's hope and then action. And when that doesn't work out, more action. And when that doesn't work out, more action. So a couple years ago, I was in New York and I was meeting with my agents and one of them said, what am I trying to do? What's, what's my vision? What's my mission? What am I trying to accomplish? And I said, I wanted to spread belief. I wanted to spread hope. And he jumped all over me about the hope. Like you want to spread hope? Hope's not enough. You can't just do hope. And, and I remember walking away, he's like, what's he talking about? Hope is so important. If you don't have hope, how are you going to believe in yourself to go chase something down? Without hope, you got nothing, right? Without hope and belief, you got nothing. Where I realized the difference in the thinking is the usage of the word is people hope things will happen. It's not having hope in something, it's hoping that it's gonna happen and then they sit on their bed, sit on their couch, sit at home and do nothing. That kind of hope, that's not a strategy. Hope and belief is your first step. It's your first entry point in. You have hope that things will happen. But then you gotta get up and do something, right? And so, figuring out that message when I was talking to my agent didn't come to you right away in the moment because at the same time, as much as I'm filled with hope and belief in humanity and, and what we can all do, I'm working, right? I'm taking action. I'm making three to four videos every day. We haven't had a day in the past five years where a video hasn't gone up every single day. I don't know what that consecutive streak is, but it's long, it's big. I'm working my face off every day in the achievement of my mission. But I also love hope and belief. It's why I have this channel, it's why I have my other channels, is I want, I want to be around people who've done a lot more. I want to learn from the greats. I want to learn from people who know more than me. And when I see that, it gives me hope that it's possible. It gives me belief that it's possible, that if they can do it, I can do it too. But you still have to do it. The ability to do it versus actually executing and doing it are two very different things, right? The difference gap is going to be the action. And so 
Yes, I want you to have hope. I think it's important, but it's not the only thing. You gotta make sure you turn that hope and not just rely on the strategy, but you're doing the daily work to chase down your dreams. Rule number nine, try new things. People aren't lazy. They just don't have dreams that inspire them. They default to thinking, I'm a lazy person. I don't have ambitions. I don't know what I wanna do in life. I'm just, I'm just a loser. No, you just don't have a dream that makes you wanna go off and do something. And until you figure that out, you're gonna be in this constant cycle of feeling like a loser. It's one of the most common questions that I get asked on my IG streams. I go live every single day on Instagram, at least right now while I'm on my tour. And every single day I get asked some variation of, Evan, I'm lazy, how do I get out of it? Evan, I'm procrastinating, how do I get out of it? One, you don't call yourself a lazy person. There's no such thing as a lazy person. If you are procrastinating or you're being lazy, right? you are being lazy doesn't mean that you are a lazy person. There's two reasons why you're doing it. There's two reasons why you are being lazy. One, you don't have a dream that's big enough. You don't have something that inspires you. You don't wanna get out of bed in the morning. If I was an accountant, I would be a really lazy accountant. I would hate my life. Not to knock accountants, it's just not for me. If I was a video editor, <laughs> I, would be, I would be lazy. I would hate my life. I don't wanna be a video editor. I don't wanna be an accountant. Actually, there's most things in the world that I don't wanna be. And if you forced me to do that, I would be lazy. That's 95% of America. I think 95% of America wakes up and drives to a job that they hate. And then they're lazy there. But they have dreams, they have ambitions. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something, you just have to find it. And so if you don't know what that thing is, then it's your duty to go off and explore. You test, you try, you see. You say yes to a lot of stuff. Like this is the most important thing that you need to figure out in your life if you don't know what your dream is. You have to go off and try things. Just like you won't get married until you go on dates. You won't get married to an idea until you go on dates, until you try it, until you say yes. And the acid test is, did I like it? Do I wanna go back? Does this fill me up? Did I enjoy the process of it? Can I see myself doing this and having fun? Because when you're having fun doing the work, that's when it will fill you up. That's when you won't be lazy. And there has been times in all your lives where you felt that, where you felt the joy, the energy, the ambition, the drive. And so you need to capture that and say yes and find what it is that your big dream is. And rule number 10, the last one before our very special bonus clip for you is have fun. What is the most constructive criticism you've ever received? Can you go to the next question? I don't know. No, this is a good question. No, no, okay, go to the next question. Are you serious? Yeah, you yeah. skip this? That's a great yeah. question. No. Yeah, I had a great answer to Ignatian. Anyway. We'll you can tell on. me afterward. How often do you take stock of your life and evaluate the direction you're going? When you do... Okay, next question. I don't like this one, too. Because <laughs> it's too long, right? Okay. As already, she's already zoning out. It was not, if you can't answer the question in 10 words, she's out. Okay. Where's someone you never want to travel to and why? That's a pretty question. <laughs> what <did> you just <laughs> said? <laughs> well, I didn't even hear what you Where said. Where is somewhere you'd never want to travel to and why? I would want to travel everywhere. It could be even, like, something small, like a sewer. <laughs> no. Like, it doesn't have to be a country. Would you want to travel to a sewer? No. Okay, we'll take it something like that. Okay, not a sewer. Okay. No, not a sewer. It's something similar. I don't know. What else? How about a slaughterhouse? No. What? But no. where would there be a slaughterhouse? I don't know. General. Like, you could pick. You don't have to pick like China or something. You could, you could pick a. What do you mean? No, I'm saying you don't have to pick something. You pick. You don't have to be a city or a country. You could be. You could pick I don't something know. else. Any, anywhere that it's, it's thrilled. A horror, I don't like to go. Oh, there you go. Like a horror horror amusement park or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. Good answer, good answer, good answer, <laughs> Nina. Good answer, good answer. I would say space. Why? Well, don't you want to go? I would like to go to space. I have no interest in going to space. What if I say, hey, Evan, I want to go to space and I want you to come with? Wow. <laughs> you want to go to space? Yeah, why not? It's, not? it's cool. I mean... You get to control. You get to control what? Like, you're in the space, you know, you move, you could, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. You get to control, you get to move, what? You just want to float? Yeah. Swim. <laughs> no, I don't want, I don't like swimming. Now we got a very special bonus clip from Evan on how to not fear judgment that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I want to know what's the one thing that you're gonna try today. Please let me know in the comment below. And if you made it this far in the video and you promise to take action for watching the video, give me a hashtag believe in the comment below. We want to celebrate you. Well, at least we do.
Most people play small in life because you base your decisions off the expectations of other people. You have big dreams, big ambitions, big goals, but the people around you and the ones online don't think that you can do it. You don't want the life that they have. And if you listen to their negative judgment, you will never get the life that you're capable of. So I recently started a challenge on Instagram called the Instagram, what do I call it? The just woke up challenge on Instagram. Just, I just woke up, right? So I'll, as soon as I wake up, I'm heading to the bathroom. I turn on the bathroom light. I like just woke up and I hashtag it just woke up challenge. And it's whatever I think of to say when I just woke up, I'm tired. My eyes are super baggy. Sometimes I have a shirt on, sometimes not. I'm not very coherent. It's, it's a disaster. It's me at my worst. It's me at my very, very, very worst. And then I share something, not sure what it is, and then I post. And I put that to my Twitter, and I put that to my Instagram, and I put that to my TikTok, I put it to my Facebook, I put it everywhere. Here's me at my worst. This is me at my worst. I look the worst, I think the worst. This is me at my very worst. Let's go. Why? Why do I do that? Because I don't want to feel the negative judgment on my content, on my willingness to create something and then not do it. The reason why so many people don't go off and create is because you're worried that somebody's going to judge you negatively for it. This is the problem. You want to serve, right? You want to help. Humans are built to serve, right? This is my new book, Built to Serve. If you want to check out the book, there's a link somewhere here. You can go check it out. Be one of the first to buy it. Oh, I love you. You're built to serve. The problem is you're afraid of judgment. So serving requires helping other people, but fear of judgment, fear of letting people down, disappointing them, being mocked, being made fun of, not getting the result that they want, that prevents you from taking action. And so you have your foot on the gas and a brake at the same time. That's a problem. That means you're just spinning your wheels, knowing you're capable of more, but never taking the action that you need. You want to serve, you want to help people, and as long as you're playing small based off of other people's expectations, you're never gonna, you're never gonna do it. You're never gonna, you're never gonna fulfill your mission. It's never gonna happen. And so I started my Instagram Live morning challenge, right? The Just Woke Up challenge, because I don't want to be afraid of what you guys think of me. Maybe not you guys, because I love you, but random internet people, right? So here's me at my worst. How about it? Go. Everything else I make is good. I can't get any worse than what I just put out. So if you're afraid of what other people think of you, that is not an acceptable reason anymore for not taking action. As soon as you feel other people judging you and that's the reason, then you have to do it. You have to teach yourself that you do it. You jump into it. Even if you don't win, just to do it. You do it just to do it. You take, you film a piece of content because you're afraid of people judging you. You film it and you post it just to show yourself that you can. Because whenever you play small based off of somebody else's opinion, if you want to make a video, if you want to create a company, if you want to launch a service, but you're afraid based off of somebody else's opinion, if that's the reason why you say no, every time you do that, every time you don't take action because of somebody else's opinion, you're telling yourself that you suck. You're telling yourself, I want to do this, but I'm not, I'm afraid I suck. And I want to limit the number of times you tell yourself that you suck. And instead I want to show you are awesome. If you want 10 more rules from my husband, Evan Carmichael, check out the link next to me. I think you're gonna enjoy. Bye, believe, we'll see you there. Serving other people touches the same part of our brain as eating food and having sex. You need it. But how do you serve?